Welcome back to the AP Biology video series. This is Unit 8 Ecology, and we're right now looking at Video 3. Video 3 is going to cover Community Ecology, or Unit 8.5. Let's start with some basics. What's a community? What is Community Ecology? And what are some aspects of a community that we can measure? A community is all the organisms that inhabit a particular area. That includes animals, plants. Um, in this picture, you can see wolves, elk, grasses, trees in the background, but also all the organisms that you can't see. There are microbes in the soil. Um, there are fungi around. Oh, there are lots of um, bacteria living in and on the, um, the animals and on the plants. Um, there are probably parasites. So it's all of the organisms in the um, environment. Community ecology is the study of how the interactions between species affect community structure and organization, and that includes the three aspects that we're going to look at, species richness, species diversity, and relationships between populations. To understand species richness and species diversity, let's look at two communities of trees. Compare and contrast these communities. Do you think they have the same species diversity? What goes into a calculation of species diversity? Diversity takes into account two factors. One is species richness, which is the number of different species present in the area, and the other is relative abundance, which is the proportion each species represents of all individuals in the community. This relates to species evenness. So the more evenly distributed, or not spatially, but in terms of numbers, um, the more equal the relative abundance is of all of the species, the higher the diversity. What that means is community one ends up having the greater species diversity. So even though they have the same species richness, because they each have um, four types, right, they each have four species, community one has greater species evenness, because there is an equal abundance of all four of those species. So that means that community one has the greater species diversity. We can calculate this mathematically using a formula called Simpson's Diversity Index. This formula is on your formula sheet, so you don't need to memorize it. But as with all the other formulas on your formula sheet, you do need to know how to use it. So see if you can figure out what this means. Try to see how many of these values on this table you can calculate. And the end goal is to figure out what is the diversity index of community number one. In this community, the number of organisms of a particular species is the same for each of our trees. There are four of each of those trees. There are four of each, of each kind, and there are four kinds, so that means that there are 16 total trees. That sigma means sum, so it's the total. So that's that first row of n. Now if we look at that second row on our table, um, n over n, little n over big n, what we do is the total number of organisms of a particular species divided by the total number of species. So because all of these are the same, um, we're going to get the same value for each. But for each of those, the way you calculate that is 4 divided by 16 squared, because it's how many of that particular type of tree divided by the total number of trees. You add those up and you get 0.25. If you notice, our diversity index tells you that it's 1 minus the sum of n over n squared. Um, and so that means that the diversity index of community 1 is 0.75. Let's try this again for diversity index of community 2. Diversity index of community number 2 is 0.491. Um, in this case, we do, the same, um, we do the same procedure, so you plug in the little n, which is the number of each um, specific type of tree, divided by the total number of organisms of all the species we're considering. So in this case, for example, in that first column, that kind of um, bushy tree there, it's 1 over 16 squared. And then you sum all of those and you get 0.509. 1 minus 0 0.509 is 0 0.491. So if we're comparing our two communities, community one, the species diversity index was 0.75, community two, the species diversity index was 0.491. So community one has the greater uh, diversity. And like we said at the beginning, this is because there's a better evenness or a more equal evenness of the species. They all have equal relative abundance. 
Another way that we can examine a community is by looking at the relationships between different species in that community. Here are little pictures representing five different types of relationships that you see in communities. You've probably heard of some of these before. See if you can figure out what each of these is representing. Starting on the top left, we have competition. Here the squirrel and the bird are fighting over the same resource. In this case, it's food on a really adorable little picnic bench. Next one over, we've got mutualism, where the um, bird is cleaning the mouth of this reptile. I don't know the difference between crocodiles and alligators. We're going to call it a reptile. Both of them benefit. The reptile gets the uh, clean teeth, and that bird is going to get a snack. Okay, I looked it up. It's a crocodile. And the reason I wanted to look it up and come back to this is that technically both birds and that crocodile are reptiles. And this is probably not something that you need to know, but I think it's fascinating. Birds are reptiles. Parasitism is where you have an organism living off of another one. So in this case, the tick is um, hoping to um, burrow into the fur of this mammal and um, get some blood. That's not going to work out so well for the mammal. So it's a fitness disadvantage um, for the one that is being parasitized, and it's an advantage to the parasite. Predation, um, I think you're familiar with a predator-prey relationship, is when one organism kills another um, for a food source. Commensalism, this one's probably the hardest one to figure out, but what this picture is trying to show is that this cow is just grazing, and as it does, it's stirring up some bugs in the grass. So the cow is just trying to eat the grass. It's minding its own business. Um, the birds um, aren't bothering the cow. It's not really doing um, any benefit or harm to the cow, but the birds are benefiting um, from the cow because the cow stirs up those, um, those insects that then the birds can eat. These, follow, these three on the right, mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism, are all considered to be types of symbiosis. It's a um, close relationship between two species. Um, in mutualism, both organisms benefit. In parasitism, one organism benefits and the other it's a disadvantage. In commensalism, one of the organism benefits and the other is really not affected. Competition and predator-prey relationships are both important relationships in community ecology, but are not technically considered types of symbiosis. And that's the end of this video, which was Unit 8.5, Looking at Community Ecology.